This is Jared Horak, and it's Friday, October 25th, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at the latest Breeders' Cup Classic news. Now, the Breeders' Cup pre-entries were announced on Wednesday this week, and the Grade 1 $7 million Breeders' Cup Classic is going to be run at Del Mar on Saturday, November 2nd. Now, keep checking my YouTube channel for all of these 2024 Breeders' Cup videos. I have a couple planned for this weekend. I have a Breeders' Cup Friday preview and a Breeders' Cup Saturday video preview planned for over the weekend, and I will be posting those on my YouTube channel in the coming days. I also posted videos, those are short videos, for all three closing day stakes races at Keeneland for Saturday, October 26th. And through the first 19 stakes races at the Keeneland Fall Meet, my top choices have seven wins, three seconds, and four third place finishes. And then also, I have my Road to the Kentucky Derby at Kentucky Oaks 2025 video series. And that will continue at Churchill Downs on Sunday, October 26th, with the Rags to Riches stakes and Oaks prep and the Street Scent stakes at Kentucky Derby prep. So far in my Road to the Derby video series, my top choices have three wins from four races with a runner up finish. So I'm up to a fast start on those Road to the Derby videos. I'll be posting those in the coming days with those Breeders' Cup uh, Friday and Saturday preview videos. Now my annual two-day Breeders' Cup full card analysis is gonna be available Breeders' Cup week at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. You can pre-purchase those cards now. You can get Breeders' Cup Friday, Breeders' Cup Saturday, both Breeders' Cup days, and all four Breeders' Cup full cards for Del Mar for Breeders' Cup week. And then I'm also covering the Del Mar fall meet each day, like I do every year. You can go over to the runawayhorse.com, click on the Buy Cards tab at the top of my homepage to get more details on those Breeders' Cup full cards and those Del Mar full cards. And then also this weekend, closing weekend at Santa Anita Park, have those full cards as well. So I've been selling full cards since the late 1990s. Uh, and for the Breeders' Cup, I've had a lot of success over the years. And my Breeders' Cup full cards include analysis of every horse and every Breeders' Cup race historical trends, wagering strategies for every race, pick four, pick five, pick six tickets as well. Now the final Breeders' Cup entry day is Monday, October 28th, and at that point we're going to have post positions and morning line odds. Right now we have 16 horses pre-entered pre -entered for the Classic, 14 horses can run, Pyrenees and Rattle and Roll are the two alternates, but I have some updated news about that. Let's, let's dive into that Breeders' Cup Classic news. Now, Fierceness, he had his final Breeders' Cup Classic workout on October 25th, and he went four furlongs in 48.98 seconds, eighth best of 24 on the training track at Saratoga, in company with his stablemate, Illuminaire. Galloped out five furlongs in 102 and six furlongs in 115 and change. This was an easy maintenance move for Fierceness. Uh, he's been moving well in his well, Breeders' Cup workouts. He's had some nice gallop outs as well, so he seems to be coming up to the race in good order. Now, next, he breathed five furlongs in 101, second best of six at Turfway Park on October 24th, and his connections have confirmed that he is going to run in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He was also pre entered in the Breeders' Cup turf. Now, Senior Buscador, he worked six furlongs in 112. He was the only horse to work at that distance at Del Mar on October 25th. The fractions, 46 and change, 58 and change for the five furlongs. So he's one that's always been a good workhorse. He was getting tired a bit at the end of this workout, and he's going to have to reverse his form because he hasn't been in great form recently, but he does have back class. Skippy Longstocking for trainer Safi Joseph Jr., he drilled a four furlong bullet in 47.93 seconds, best of 24 on the dirt training track at Saratoga. That was on October 25th in company with his stable mate, the Queen's MG, and he galloped out five furlongs in 101 and change. Now, Daily Racing Form is reporting uh, that National Treasure has dropped out of the dirt mile, and after National Treasure dropped out of the dirt mile, Safi Joseph Jr. says that Skippy Longstocking will run in the dirt mile, and Irad Ortiz Jr. will ride. So Skippy Longstocking is out of the classic. He's going to run in the dirt mile. And now with that move, that allows Pyrenees for trainer Cherie DeVoe to draw into the Breeders' Cup Classic field, and Brian Hernandez Jr. will ride. Now Arthur's ride galloped at Del Mar on October 25th for trainer Bill Mott, and he's scheduled to have a workout over the Del Mar surface this weekend. 
a mixto, your Pacific Classic winner. He visited the Del Mar track on October 25th for trainer Doug O'Neill. His last workout was at Santa Anita on October 20th. So he'll probably work over the Del Mar track this weekend. And the Japanese horses have arrived at Del Mar. Derma Sotagake, Forever Young, Ushba Tesoro, all targeting the Breeders' Cup Classic. And all three visited the Del Mar racetrack on October 25th. Now we're going to look at the recent Today's Racing Digest final time ratings for the Breeders' Cup Classic hopefuls. Now as for the 2023 Breeders' Cup Classic final time rating for the Digest, White Abario was the winner and he got a 149 final time rating. And Derma Sotagake was a length back in second and he is running in the Classic this year. Now Arthur's Ride, he only got a 117 final time rating last time in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. He was the beaten favorite. He got embroiled in a pace battle with Highland Falls, and he wilted in the stretch. But before that, he got a 150 final time rating when he went wire to wire in the mud in the grade one Whitney stakes at a mile and an eighth at Saratoga. And then prior to that, he went wire to wire controlling the pace, getting a 153 final time rating in a mile and a quarter race at Saratoga against the Lowens Company. So Arthur's ride can handle the distance. He's a grade one winner, and we'll see if he can rebound in the Classic. Now, I mentioned White Abaria won the Classic last year, but he also won the Whitney, just like Arthur's Ride did this year. Now, White Abaria got a 159 final time rating for his victory in the Grade 1 Whitney in 2023, and Arthur's Ride for the 2024 a Whitney, he got a 150 final time rating. So Arthur's Ride, one for two at a mile and a quarter. He's a front runner, and I guess you can consider him a contender if you can excuse his below par effort in the Jockey Club Gold Cup stakes. He's going to need a speed favoring track, and he's going, to be, he's going to need to be able to get out there and control the pace. Now, City of Troy for trainer Aiden O'Brien. He's a four-time grade one winner on turf. Three straight grade one victories at a mile and five sixteenths, a mile and a quarter, and a mile and a half. So the classic distance of a mile and a quarter is not going to give him any issues. He likes to be forwardly placed, and his connections have stated that they want him to be forwardly placed in the Classic. Now, City of Troy's trainer, Aiden O'Brien, mostly runs horses on turf, but in his career, he's run 75 horses on dirt. Two of those horses won. The two winners, Johannesburg in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and Mendelssohn in the UAE Derby. Now, two of his highly regarded Breeders' Cup Classic starters over the years hit the board, and they ran quality races. Giants Causeway, he was second by a neck in the 2000 Breeders' Cup Classic, and he also trained at Southwell for the Breeders' Cup Classic, just like City of Troy uh, did this year. Now, for Giants Causeway, he tracked the pace in the Classic in 2000, but he could not get past the winner, his now. Declaration of War, he was third, beaten a nose and a neck in the 2013 Breeders' Cup Classic at Santa Anita Park. He stalked the pace there. So City of Troy, his pedigree, Justify, Triple Crown winner Justify is his sire. So that's where he's going to get his dirt influences because on the dam side of his pedigree, it's all turf. But we'll see what City of Troy is going to be able to do. He obviously has the class. They want to get him up on the pace. And if he can run uh, like Giants Causeway and Declaration of War did in their Breeders' Cup Classic years, he'll have a shot to win this race. Now, Derma Sotagake, uh, Probably got a 146 final time rating in the 2023 Breeders' Cup Classic. But since that race, he's run three times with no wins, no seconds, and no thirds. And he's lost his last three starts by a combined 27 lengths. His mile and a quarter record, four starts with one win and one third. He does have tactical speed. He stalked the pace in the Classic last year. He'll probably run a better race than he did in his prep race in Japan for this. But he's definitely going to have to. And he's probably going to have to run a lifetime best to upset this field. Now, Fierceness, he got a 147 last time in the Travers, a 152 in the Jim Dandy, and then a 71 in the Kentucky Derby. That was his below par effort. He's one for two at a mile and a quarter, and he does have early pressing speed. So it's pretty easy to figure out what Fierceness wants to do. In his four graded uh, route stakes wins, first in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, he had an outer post. He pressed 19 to 1 long shot general partner. The, mo the splits were moderate. General partner got tired. Fierceness took over and he won that race easily. In the Florida Derby, he had an outer post and he was able to get out there and control the pace through moderate fractions against overmatched rivals. 
in the great two Jim Dandy. He had the outside post. He was able to chase 25 to one long shot Pony Express. Again, the fractions were slower and he was able to take over and hold off late runner Sierra Leone to win by a length. In the Traverse Stakes, outside post, he chased 29 to one long shot batten down. Again, moderate splits. And he was able to break the race open on the turn and get a clear lead and hold off Torpedo Anna to win that race by a head. And Sierra Leone was third, less than two lengths behind those two. So for fierceness, he's going to need a middle to outer draw. I think if he can get that and he, he gets his preferred outside early pressing trip, he could make some noise in the Breeders' Cup Classic. But if he draws an inner post and he's kind of hemmed down inside, he's not going to run his race most likely. Forever Young got a 144 in the 2023 Kentucky Derby. And he was bothered by Sierra Leone in the stretch that day. He missed by two noses, and that was his lone career defeat. Uh, he spiked a fever during a workout on September 25th, and he probably was not 100% cranked when he returned to the races on October 2nd. And that race was in Japan in the Japan Dirt Classic at a mile and a quarter. And he ran his record to six for seven. He stopped the pace, and he won that race by a length and a quarter. And the final time was 204.10. As I said, he stuck the pace there, and that's probably what they're going to want him to do here. And that race was his first start since the Kentucky Derby. And then earlier this year, he won the Grade 3 Saudi Derby, Grade 2 UAE Derby. Distance not an issue for him. Three starts, two wins, and a third. And he's a three-year-old, so he still has some upside. And I think the key to his success could be the start. They don't want him to have a slow start and get too far behind. I think he does have a decent shot if he can get out of the gate. Stay within hailing distance of the early leaders, uh, stalking or closing mid-pack. Highland Falls with a 146 last time, winning the Jockey Club Gold Cup, 134 and 149 before that. And for Highland Falls, it was all about the ride by Flavian Pratt in that Jockey Club Gold Cup at a mile and a quarter at Saratoga because he confronted Arthur's ride early, aggressive handling there. He put Arthur's ride away in the stretch, and he easily won the Jockey Club Gold Cup. But the final quarter was in 27 and change. So they were definitely were not going fast. That wasn't a particularly fast race. Uh, for him, his 10 furlong record, one for two. Pratt will not ride him in this race. Luis Saez is his rider. And he's one that if he runs back to his Jockey Club Gold Cup, he can be forwardly placed. But he's a versatile sort for trainer Brad Cox. Mixto got a 144. He won a week renewal of the Grade 1 Pacific Classic last time. Well, that was just his second career win. He does have tactical speed, his 10 furlong record, one for three. And for Mixto and Doug O'Neill, I think he'll work out a decent enough trip. I just don't think he's good enough. Newgate is a bit interesting for trainer Bob Baffert. He came off of a layoff and got a 150 final time rating, just missing, finishing a close third in the grade one California crown at Santa Anita Park at a mile and an eighth in his prep race for this. I think he can move forward in his second start after a layoff for Baffert. He's a grade one winner at a mile and a quarter. He won the Santa Anita Handicap in March. He had stalking speed, and I think he's one that possibly could hit the board. His 10 furlong record, one for two. Now next, we mentioned that he will be running in the Classic. He's had some decent final time ratings for the Digest, 161, 157, 155. But those races were at a mile and a half, a mile and three quarters, and a mile and three eighths. But typically what he likes to do, a slow, steady ra race flow. He likes to get up on the pace and be forwardly placed, tracking those slow spit, those slow fractions, or setting the pace. But I don't think he's going to be able to cope with faster fractions at a mile and a quarter. He's never run at a mile and a quarter. Now, Pyrenees for trainer Cherie DeVoe. I mentioned he will get in the race since Skippy Longstocking is going to run in the dirt mile. Pyrenees with a 134, a 144, and a 143 in his last three races for the final time ratings. And he will work again this weekend for Cherie DeVoe. He was second in the Grade 1 Stephen Foster and second in the Grade 1 Jockey Club Gold Cup in his last two starts. Two starts at a mile and a quarter with a win in the second. Distance not an issue. He likes to stalk the pace. He's just going to have to run a bit faster. Senior Buscador, he got a 105 last time out in the California Crown. 137 and 147 before that. His 10 furlong record, four starts, no wins, no seconds, and one third. He's a closer. His best opportunity most likely is to hit the board. I don't think he's going to be able to win this race and have a complete form reversal. 
and possibly come from last and pass them off. Now, Sierra Leone, another horse that likes to do his best running in the late going, he got a 141 in the Travers, a 149 in the Jim Dandy, and a 140 in the Belmont Stakes in his last three starts. All of those races were at Saratoga. Now, as for, we mentioned fierceness, and he seems to love Saratoga, Sierra Leone, on the, on the opposite end. Maybe he didn't handle that uh, Saratoga track as well as fierceness did. Now, he's been working once every seven days in New York since September 14th. So if that pattern continues, he should have his final Breeders' Cup Classic workout on October 26th. His 10 furlong record, three starts, no wins, one second and two thirds. He missed by a nose in the Kentucky Derby. He should have won that race, but he was lugging in. So that was his best effort at a mile and a quarter. Now, he is more professional and faster now that we've gotten through the summer into the fall. They did some equipment changes with him. They changed his rider to Flavian Pratt after the Kentucky Derby. And he needs pace help in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Now, tap it trice. I don't have his Woodward number, but before that, he got a 125 in, in his start prior to the Woodward. And then he got a 150 and a 137. Now, he has breezed twice since winning the grade one Woodward, grade two Woodward, excuse me. And he's going to have his final Breeders' Cup Classic move this weekend. And that 150 final time rating that he got a couple starts back was in the grade three Monmouth Cup at a mile and an eighth. He is uh, probably best at a mile and an eighth. He's 0 for 3 with one show finish at a mile and a quarter. And that show finish was in the 2023 Traverse Stakes. He can stalk or close. Ushpa Tesoro, he got a 140 in the 2023 Breeders' Cup Classic. He was beaten three and a quarter lengths. His 10 furlong record is stellar. Six starts, four wins, and a second. He was second in the Grade 1 Saudi Cup and second in the Grade 1 Dubai World Cup earlier this year. He's a closer. He's uh, plenty of experience. He likes the distance. I can see him hitting the board in the Classic. Now, rattle and roll. He's your also eligible. For trainer Kenny McPeak, he got a 135, a 134, and a 138. He needs one horse to drop out to get in, and he is entered in the Grade 2 Fayette Stakes at a mile and an eighth at Keeneland on Saturday, October 26th, their closing day. So as I see it right now, I'll make my final decisions uh, next week after we get the post positions, and I'll come back and I'll do a Breeders' Cup Classic final video where I'll give out my top choice. Right now, the five most likely Breeders' Cup Classic winners in alphabetical order, as I see it, are Arthur's Ride, I think if he can get loose, he's a grade one winner. He's won at a mile and a quarter. Maybe he'll have a shot. City of Troy certainly has the class. Uh, just a question of how he'll handle the dirt. Fierceness, grade one winner in a mile and a quarter. Good tactical speed. If he gets that outer post and that preferred early pressing trip, he can certainly win the race. Forever Young, he's always right there, six for seven. His only loss was by two noses in the Kentucky Derby, and he was bothered by Sierra Leone, my other horse. For my five most likely winners for Sierra Leone, he's going to need some pace help. He's one that's so consistent. He's always right there. You just know he's going to show up and run a quality race. And my live exotic contenders right now, Newgate for trainer Bob Baffert. I think he can move forward at a mile and a quarter in his second start after a layoff. And Ushpa Tesoro, good overall record at a mile and a quarter. He's got plenty of class as well. You can see the description below uh, in the comments uh, section. Uh, for links uh, to articles referenced in this video. So if you go into the description in this video, you'll see um, all of that information. You want to click on any of those articles and read some of these Breeders, uh, this Breeders' Cup um, news. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos. And until next time, good luck at the races. Mm -hmm.